the Joe Rogan experience. I mean, look, man, you you had some incredible fights, but to me, um, one of my fondest memories is, you know who Kevin James is from the King of Queens? You know the TV show? Mm -hmm. Me and Kevin James were at my house in Encino the night you fought Tyson, the first one, the first fight, when, when you dropped Tyson. I'll never forget it, because back then, I mean, we knew that Buster Douglas had beaten Tyson, but we kind of almost thought it was like a fluke. But when you were battering Tyson and then you put him down and stopped him, I will never forget Kevin James jumping off the couch, just jumping. Oh, my God. We're throwing our arms up in the air. I mean, that was for sure one of the greatest heavyweight championship victories in the, in the history of the sport. It was just an incredible fight because in a lot of people's eyes, Tyson was like this a bad guy. He was like a – people thought of him as like a thug, you know, and you were thought of as this like really good guy. And many people didn't think that you were going to be able to beat him. So when you didn't just beat him, but you took it to him, you took it to him. You know, like early on in the fight, you could tell that you had decided you were going to push him around. And, you know, once you had stopped him, I mean, it was that was pandemonium. In my house, everybody was going crazy. They couldn't believe it. Well, you know, I know because everybody, you know, you know, I am, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm a Christian. I, 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 but... The point of the, the point of the matter, I work hard, I train hard, and you know my mama said, "Ain't too many things that you do well." So, son, you know, which one, which one is sports you gonna do? Because I, I, I was, a, I was a good athlete. I can, I, but football and boxing was my two best one. But you know, I played basketball, I did baseball, I did everything. My mama said, "Ain't enough time in a day to be the best." At everything, yeah, that was sense. Yeah. So you got to pick one. So when I play, when I play football in tenth grade, and they put me on the bench, and I start crying, and my, my mama said, "You can't quit till the season is over." So I had to play on that. I played play on that game. They finally let me play in the championship game. And they seen how good I was, and they asked me, "Was I coming back next year?" I said, "No, sir." He said, "Why?" I said, my mama said I ain't got to. Like this, man, <laughs> my mama told me, you got to bet on yourself or you're going to bet on the coach. Right. So in boxing, you bet on yourself. Right. And in team sport, you bet on the coach. You bet on the coach, you bet on the other players, and you bet on the coach letting you play. Right. Right. Whereas in boxing, they have to let you fight. That's right. Yeah. You, you may be asking somebody to tag in for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did you think that boxing was going to be your career? Was it right after that? It was it like around 10th grade? Oh, uh, well, well, yeah. Yeah. You know, at, at, after 10th grade, I realized that, you know, it um, came down to one one sport yeah. that I really do real well. And so that's when I, I, you know, I just put everything in it. Well, you were a part of that incredible Olympic team, too. I mean, so many great fighters came out of that Olympic team, right? Yeah. Mark Breland, Pernell Whitaker, yeah, Malcolm I can, Taylor. I can tell you all of them. Paul Gonzalez, 106. Steve McCurry, yep. 112. Yep. 19. Robert Shannon, 125. Melvin Taylor, 132. Pernell Whitaker, 139. Jerry, Jerry, and and. 147 with Mark Breland, 156 Frank Take, 165 Virgil Hill, 78. That's me. right, Virgil Hill. And yeah, then then Henry Tillman and <sighs> and, and, and um, Tyrell Biggs. Tyrell Biggs. What a team! Yeah, crazy team. Nine gold medal, one silver, <sighs> one bronze. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, besides um, Michael Spinks, you were one of the rare guys to move up to move up and be successful as a heavyweight. Did you just decide, like, after you'd beat Dwight Muhammad Kawi, who was a cruiserweight champion, and you'd beat, you know, some real good names at that weight class, you just decided that heavyweight was where the real money was at? Well, no, actually, you know, my goal, I wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And and the only person I, I knew if Mike Tyson do it, I could do it. So, so... And Mike Tyson whooped everybody, you know, so, you know, you know, you people tend to make up excuses. Mm -hmm. Now Mike Tyson is a small person. Right. He he, he I'm talking me, he hit hard, but his he got short arms. Right. And so I seen Mike 
whoop, whooping people that six four, six five, six six. Mm-hmm. And they outweigh him by 20, 30 pounds. He beat the daylights out of him. Right. I figured if Mike could do it, I could do it. <laughs> so that gave you inspiration. Sorry, that that gave yeah. me inspiration. My own thing is that you know, you know, you know. I actually, you know, forced the cruiserweight division. I kind of went through that. And what's the next goal? Is to go up, and you know, and and I I chose to do it. And a lot of people said, "Man, you crazy?" Uh, well, you know, you have to be a little of that to be in this anyway. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, right? Yeah. So when you first did fight Mike Tyson, was that like something you had always knew was going to happen? But once he got out of jail, well, it was like, it was like this. My mama used to tell me, she said, "Now, let me tell you something about a good fighter. You can't wish him away. They ain't never going nowhere. You got to face it." And so you know what? And you know, and everybody in everything that I've done, everybody will always remind me. You didn't beat Mike Tyson, though. right? And I was like, "Well, you, you, you're right." And I said, "But it's not like it was my fault, right?" And I just, I said, you know, every time I got ready to fall, and something happened. I said, "But it wasn't my fault." Well, you, you, you ain't really the champ till you beat him. I, it was amazing that he was so popular. I'm talking, especially in my house. I was, you know, <laughs> when people get mad at me, they tell me, "I can't wait till you fight Mike Tyson." That's <laughs> like, crazy. And so the thing is, is that you know. You know, he was that person that I watched every one of his fight, and and I realized you can't make that many that many mistakes with Mike. Right. When you finally did beat him, do you think when you did fight him and did beat him, do you think that that raised your your celebrity and your notoriety to a different level? Not not really. I think no. that it it let people know that you ain't got you ain't got it be considered a bad person to be good in the ring. Yeah. I'm saying because when you know my own thing, I could box and but everybody thought that because I didn't curse a lot or I don't get in trouble that you you, you ain't mean enough to be the mean guy. And right. most so then I mean I'm a skillful fighter. I took care of my body and I did everything right. I'm to you know I, I you know in, in general I I fought a lot of guys who were a lot bigger and and but it's an art to the game. It's really an art. It, it's really an art. It is. It's not just one thing. You just you hit harder because you got to be able to take something to give some. Right. Well, you always could take it. Yeah. That was a big part of your your career when you had an iron chin. I mean, Riddick Bowe was a giant man, and he hit you with some bombs in those wars that you guys had. You were able to take some incredible punches. Well, yeah. You know, the art with me, I knew that. I can take it, but can you take it? And so the whole big thing is the whole big thing. My whole thing, my whole my whole big thing with Mike is that what Mike had told somebody say, everybody got a plan till they get hit, and and he was right because you know if if you hitting it, if this guy worried about you hitting him, and he ain't worried about getting hit, so he ain't got to worry about it. Right. But I knew if you hit me, I was gonna hit you back. And so that was part of the plan was to let yeah. him know that early. Right. It seems like that was when you, when you fought him, particularly in the first round, you pressed him, and it was, that was a rare moment to see someone like really pushing Mike back and getting Mike back on his heels. Well, and see, in all the other game, if if you like Mike get you back, that may be it. Right. 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 So you had to attack him. So the whole big thing, the whole big thing with me was, it, it's things that my mama said. She said, "Let me tell you." When you know, when you know how good you are, when somebody press you with what you're doing, she said, "Mike, low to press other people, but do, can he handle the press?" My mom said, "Do it back to him. Do it back. If you want to see somebody stop doing something to you, do it to them. All of a sudden, they'll stop. People really don't like what you make, what you do to somebody, and somebody do it again, you get ticked. Right." Like that, so and so the thing was to we practice just putting pressure, putting pressure, putting pressure, make him feel the same way that he make other people feel. So that was the game plan going that into the that game fight. plan. Yeah, was there anything surprising about that fight? Uh, not to, not to me because I didn't want no surprise. Because of the surprise, <laughs> you may get knocked out. Right. <laughs> like this. So the thing is, is to stay on him mm-hmm. and and let him think about all these those things. 
Now, once you stopped him in the first fight, the second fight is the fight that's probably the most famous fight because he bit a chunk of your ear off. And I saw it when you were coming in here. Show everybody that. Well, you know. Uh, Did you ever think about getting that fixed? Well, no. It, you know, uh, no, I, that's my identification. No? <laughs> if I ain't got my ID, I can show my ear. <laughs> <laughs> that is, right? If you want to get into somewhere. Um, do you know who I am? Look at my ear. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That was one of the craziest moments when Mills Lane looked at you and you were jumping up in the air and looked at Tyson and realized, holy shit, he bit a chunk out of your fucking ear. Right. Like, what? What were you thinking at that time? Biting him back. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm serious. I was getting ready to bite the daylights out of him. And I was going to bite him in the face. I would bite him in the face. I wasn't going to wait for the ear. I was going to get the fat stuff. You know, because, you know, when you're from the ghetto, they say, if you do something, you got to do it worse than what they did. Right. And so, you know, and I told Mike in a talk show, I said, no. I said, no, I act, I was pretending like like I was hurting real bad. I said, but I was going to trip you up and bite you right in your face. Everybody know what I was going to do. I said, but, uh, you know, this, this prophet told us before the fight, he told me, he said, look, he going to do something. In your face area, that, but you got to stay focused because if, if you don't stay focused, God, that's the only way he's going to get you. Right. So by him biting me on my ear, when and man, and I knew I was getting ready to bite him back. And, 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 but my corner person started, started telling me, keep my mind on the Lord. Mm. And because the, 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 the prophet told me, say, only way he can get you to get your mind, he, he going to do something to you. Right. And your, I thought he gonna hit me with elbow, a uh, hip, but anything like that. But mm -hmm. I never ever thought in my life he would bite me on the ear and, and bite a chunky ear. Oh, and it hurt so bad. And people said, "How bad did it hurt?" I said, "Did you see how high I jumped?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, it was crazy. You just yeah. leaped up in the air." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, it hurt so bad. And I said, "Dan," I said, "Dan." That guy, my corner guy, Tim Hallmark, would kept telling me, keep my mind on the Lord. And I ain't want to hear that. You know, right. if, now, right. even though he was saying that, and I was, man, I was still, I was just trying to remember that, get him. I want to bite him. I, was, <laughs> I, I, I really <laughs> wanted to bite him back. And, and all of a sudden, I, it, it hit my mind that they always catch the second person. Right. So I'm telling you, anything in life, and I'm the one that people always did something to them, they will always catch me. And I'm the only one to get, get caught all the time because they always catch me trying to, to get to get back. So revenge is the Lord. So you don't go get back because you're going to get caught. Yeah, well, I was amazed that they didn't stop the fight immediately. Well, they came back and checked, and, and he asked me, you all right? And I said, yeah, because I I at least wanted to hit him. Right. I, I really wanted to hit him. I was man. I was I was really upset. Well, he tried to bite you twice, right? Well, yeah. He, he bit me twice. He bit you twice. He, he bit me when when we went back in and he thought I was gonna be scared. Then he seen I caught him with these two shots. Then he bit me again, man. And I jumped back and I was just getting ready to kick him in the ball. <laughs> like this, and, <laughs> and, 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 and the bell rung, and I went back to the corner, and boy, and I was so doggone mad. I was, I was really going to get him, and they stopped the fight. Yeah. And then I got mad because they stopped the fight. Because you were going to get him. I, mean, I wanted yeah. to get him back. Well, it seemed like he thought that you were going to get him, and he was trying to find a way out. Well, yeah. That's well, the only thing that made sense. Well, yeah. But the thing is, the only thing that I guess— with me and what I stand on is that I was able to forgive him. And yeah. that's, that has been the turnaround in my life to tend to make people, people always wonder about the ear, the ear bite. And I said, but I forgave him. And everybody said, so what's special about that? And I said, but everywhere I go around the world with the Muslim, whatever, and people said, wow. This guy can forgive. How can you forgive when you already beaten the guy? Yeah, I said, but you know, but it's it's what it's what life have to be if you're gonna survive with 
even your brothers and sisters. Because if you don't forgive nobody, you're going to be a mad person. And you're going to find yourself locked up. Right, right. And it's going to haunt you. Yes. Whereas if you forgave him, it took a weight off your shoulders? Yeah. I'm t- I'm t- I, uh, Mike and I, we do a lot of things together because the forgiveness part. I'm it's su- cool to see you two together now. I mean, when, when I have seen things that you've done together, I'm like, wow, it's crazy. Like after he bit you, those crazy fights, and to see you together laughing and joking around together, it's it's pretty interesting. Well, I'm telling you, when you tell people, you know, when you don't choose your parents, you don't choose your neighborhood, you ain't choose your skin color, you ain't choose to be tall or short, but you know, this is your statue. And and two people, two people who came from the ghetto who box and, and, and box was the only thing I did real well. Okay, and football. And but the thing is that after all that Look at how much money we made doing something that we, by doing it properly, we make money. Yeah. We make money and we can both, you know, raise our family in the way that we want to raise them. How long did it take after the fight before you forgave them? I, it was, by, it, I think after about by the time I, I got into the locker room and everybody started complaining. Man, I can't believe he did this, 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 this. I said, look, I said, did he bite you? They said, no, I, okay. I said, he bit me, right? And I said, now, I'm going to forgive him. And you know what? Y'all got to forgive him too. Wow. They said, what you mean, forgive him? I said, he ain't bite you. I said, he bit me. <laughs> I said, look, I'm going to forgive him. Wow. So yeah. you forgave him in the locker room right yeah. after the fight. Yes. Because the thing is, the thing is, I, you know, I was really mad coming coming down and people throwing water and people mad and they upset because they didn't get a chance to see what they really wanted to see. Right. Like this. And so they were mad and they were upset. And and I asked, you know, me, I figured, who in control? God. So I said, Lord, what is this thing all about? And he said, forgive me. And I, and I said, well, who in the world want to forgive me? But this is what it is. We, we're the two very important people that everybody come to see and they need to know that forgiveness is a big part of life and so I was able to do that so in the point of being able to do that you know I I, I realized that it made my life better all over the world you got a Kleenex Kleenex yeah sure that's, that's a very powerful thing man it yeah. really is that's a very powerful decision and you know it's a very powerful statement you know to, for you to forgive him after that, I mean, that really, uh, that probably did a lot of good for a lot of people to realize, man, if Evander Holyfield can forgive Mike Tyson after he bit a chunk of his ear off, I mean, that's a that's a strong statement of character right there. Well, you know, the thing is, I didn't, now, a little early than that, then they may not would have got that. Right. They would have got to him. <laughs> so if you bit his face, <laughs> but yeah. but but the, yeah. the, 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 it's it's amazing how what time would do for you. Right, right. I, at one point in time, I'm telling you, something something would have happened. Right. But because they they gave me a little time to think about it and gave me and and I was like, and you know and you know what I mean when when things things don't go right, I go back to the prayer and say, Lord, what is this about, all about? Right. And he said, forgiveness. And, you know, and I, I wouldn't be who I am as it wasn't from forgiveness. Right. I'm talking about everybody don't fell short somewhere. Right. And like that. So, you know, the whole big thing is, and and I talked to, the week a week after that, I talked to Mike. We were, we, were, we was at the All-Star basketball game in, in New York. And, and I looked up. And, and everybody was streaming. And I wonder what they were streaming about, telling me to watch out. I'm like, watch out for who? I looked up at, at, at Mike, and he had this big bear coat, and he like this. And so everybody was telling me, and, and it warned me that Mike, Mike there. He had a big bear skin coat? No, you know, he had a big, big fur coat. Yeah, big fur coat and the stuff like that. And he wouldn't do nothing but shake hands. And, wow. And a week after. A week after, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so your ear is probably still sore. No, no, I want to even. Really? That, the thing is, with my ear, my ear is almost like a testimony. Right. And, you know, it's almost like you win a trophy yourself 
that a person looked and said, man, he forgave the guy. So I see that more people, when they see me, they look at my ear. Then after they see me in the ear, then they are smile. Like, so you're not in anger. They smile and say, well, you know, he, he forgave that guy. Wow. Yeah, so, so when you saw Mike, did you guys talk? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, a week well, after the fight? Yeah. What did yeah. he say to you? I mean, matter of fact, his his room was next door to mine, and I didn't know. <laughs> we came we came out. We we come out at the same time. He looked. He looked. He asked me, "Is it all good?" I said, "Yeah." So we get on the elevator together. Whoa! And we come down with the door open. Everybody was shocked. <laughs> so they were shocked, wondering why we wasn't fighting. Right. And then I, it was and, just you two in the elevator, or yeah, other people yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that's just it. you two in the yeah, elevator. Yeah. And so, wow. And so, at the shocking part, and they said, "Man, man, we thought they would be fighting." And I told the guys, "Man, I said, you know how much money I got paid in that fight? How much money can you think we gonna fight for free?" <laughs> 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 Was there ever talk about a third fight? Wait, well, yeah, 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 I had people mention it. You know, they they mention it. Right, and but you know, I'm, the thing is, is that they want to give a lot of money, and they they were asking me to try to. And the, my only thing is that I, I kind of feel like it's kind of bully for you to ask somebody to fight, to fight you again when you know you're gonna win again. Right. I'm, so, you know, so the whole big thing is, you know, I just didn't, I didn't think that if Mike, if Mike wanted to do it, I would have done it. But I wasn't going to go ask. I right. think I think you've been a bully when you know you're better than somebody and you want to you want to play them in something that you know you're going to beat them. Right, right. And I, you right. Know, it's a challenge. It's somebody to challenge you like that I can come back and, and beat you. But, you know, just to just, you know, you feel that you're better. And so I think it'd be wrong for me to ask it. Right. No, that's that's amazing. I mean, but that just shows what kind of a person you are. Like, uh, it shows what kind of character you have. And that sort of defines your career, that you are the guy that did always seek the big challenges. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I, you know, winning is, you know, I, you know, the nickname Real Deal, and I was like, and people ask me, how you get that name Real Deal? I said, you know, I, just, I thank God for all the, anything that great, it come from God at all given time. You know, I'm you know, I had a mom who who had a sixth grade education, but she raised me. She raised the four time heavyweight champ of the world. She stayed on me all the time and, and my brothers and sisters said, Mom, you're gonna make a sister to him. You don't let him go out, you don't let him do nothing. My mama said, He gonna be all right. You just wait and see. And and when I think about it, she never did give in to what nobody said about about me, and I became who I am. And I'm just so I'm just so thankful that. And, and the Bible said, "All good things come from God. Anything that is good for you, it came from God." 